says, unless you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom. And so I just feel like this is just something really special, them being here. It's like a sign from the Lord of just having like just childlike faith. And when God says something in the word, just to take it as a child. When God says, I'm healing, then just say, okay, I'm healing. If God says, I'm speaking to you, then God speaks. So I just feel like actually, can you kids, can you guys stand up over here? Is it all right? And so we're actually going to, and if there's any more kids that want to be part of this over outside, you guys could come in too. So what you guys are going to do, if you feel comfortable, can you guys stand on the stage real quick? Cool. And so actually, normally we have the grown-up people, quote-unquote. We pray for you guys, but I want you guys actually to pray for all the adults, okay? And so what we're going to do, this is amazing. This is so awesome. <laughs> wow. And then I want, and so I want all you kids here, man, I feel the Holy Spirit. This is strong. Whew. I want you guys to extend your arms out to all of the adults out there, okay? Just extend your arms. Okay, I'm just going to pray with you guys for everyone else, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So God, we just thank you for the kingdom of heaven is to be received like a child. And so God, we just release childlike faith over every p person here that's hearing this voice. God, we just thank you for the, the children shall inherit the kingdom. And God, we just take you out your word. We thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. Jesus, we thank you that you love every person here powerfully. And God, we thank you for simplicity of hearing your voice, just like a son hears their dad, just like as a daughter hears their father. I thank you for the simplicity of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's give it up for all the kids. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Thank you guys. Well, wow. you guys just cool. Maybe one of these days you guys could preach too. But we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait a couple of years maybe. <laughs> um. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So good. All right, guys. If, I, if, if you guys don't understand my message, then I preach poorly, okay? If, if you ever want to become a good preacher, go to Children's Church. And, and teach to them, and if they're like, this is boring and it makes no sense, you're not a good preacher yet. <laughs> as soon as they can understand, then you've got a victory right there. And uh, I was a youth pastor for, what, 28 years? And I learned that real fast. Those junior high boys do not care. <laughs> All right. I'm going to talk about the five most important things that change your life. Well, I'm just going to mention them. I'm just going to talk about one of them tonight because I can't talk about all five of them. Here's the things that change your life. Salvation totally transforms your life. Once you get saved, once you meet Jesus, once you find out that unconditional love is flowing towards you and you are accepted in the beloved, and you don't have to earn your salvation, but you are loved and forgiven, that changes everything. First, first thing. The second thing is water baptism. That's why you need to run to the ocean and get water baptized. Because when you are water baptized, you make a declaration to the world that I am dead to you. I am dead to you and I'm alive to Christ. And because the devil's trick is to say, you're not dead to sin. You're not dead to sin. You're not dead to sin. And, and, he, and, he, and he speaks that to you every day. But you say, you say I had the funeral and there's the, great, the tombstone because I went in the water. That's the power of baptism. And you need to be baptized if you haven't been baptized because it speaks a, a mighty declaration to all the cosmos yeah. that I am dead to the world yeah. and alive to Christ. So that's powerful. Holy Spirit baptism. Is, Holy Spirit baptism is, an, is uh, the next thing that changes your life. When you're filled with the Spirit, it changes everything. You're, you're, uh, you find out that you've got power from on high, that God's uh, endued you with power, and it makes all the difference in the world. The next thing is sharing your faith. Did you know that there's some things that you will never understand unless you share your faith with somebody else? There's some things that you'll never, I, if I could quote the Bible, I would quote this verse that says something like, I hope you have a full understanding of everything you have as you share your faith. 
Anyway, it's in the Bible. So just open your Bible and find it. Philemon. Philemon, yes. And there's some things that are hidden from you until you try to explain it and teach it to somebody else. And then it breaks open in your own heart. Praise God. Sharing your faith is what we're called to do. The, next, the last thing is to believe in the return of Jesus, that Jesus is coming back, that the king, this, we, aren't, we aren't dealing with the highest authority in this world. We are not dealing with the highest authority. Okay, there's another authority that we obey. We're not being rebellious. Listen, I don't care how many ordinance, the ordinances they pass, I am not being rebellious. I am simply, at times, when I have to, obeying a higher authority. There's no rebellion in my heart at all. Rebellion is the principle of Satan. We do not operate under rebellion. We operate under obedience. But if they are going to put ordinances that cause me not to be able to obey God, then guess who's going to lose? And that drives them crazy. So much so that they'll say, you, you put your knee down or I'm going to throw you in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You put your knee down. When you hear the music, you kneel and you bow down to my image. And they're like, I, do what you want. God can save us. Even if he doesn't, I am never going to bow my knee to your idol. That's powerful. <laughs> Amen. So the thing I want to talk about tonight is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The first, one of the first times I ever preached this message was at uh, kids camp. It was a kids camp. It wasn't even youth camp. Yeah, so all these guys were there. Remember, guys, when I preached this? It was awesome. So I'm going to talk about it. If it's not simple enough, then just let it go. <laughs> if it makes sense, and if it seem, appears to be from the Bible, then you should hold on to it. If you don't know why, why do these people believe in the Holy Spirit or speak in tongues? Because I just don't believe that. At least after tonight, you'll understand what, what, why people believe such a thing. Amen. So that's good. So let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I pray your word would be life. I, thank, I pray your word would be like an arrow, and it shoots, and it hits our hearts. I know there's people that are hungry. They're hungry for more. And I thank you for the message tonight in Jesus' name. Last Wednesday night, I was sitting right there in that chair that I'm always sitting in when I go to church here. Don't ever take my chair. Because <laughs> I love you. I love you like a brother, but you can't sit in my chair. Just kidding. I'm not going to start anything, okay? Anyway, I was sitting there, and it was worship time, I think. And I felt like God said, I want you to, pray on the, I want you to preach Sunday night on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good idea. And so after, after service, we have all these people that come up usually for prayer, and I, uh, I talked to uh, Carly. Is Carly here tonight? I talked to her after church, and I don't know if I, I don't remember ever meeting her before, but we, I prayed for her, and she had pain in her uh, neck and stuff like that, and afterward I said, do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? And she said, oh my gosh, yes. And I've been, I've been thinking about this for two weeks. It's like, whoa, that's amazing. So I prayed with her, and good things happened. And it was really, really one of the it was just an outpouring of the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is poured out in a church, it's an unusually anointed thing, okay? Because it just doesn't happen. I mean, you can be in a service and you pray and, all right, whatever, just chirp, 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 chirp. But then when people start getting the Holy Spirit, it's powerful and you know there's an unusual anointing on that. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Jesus said the baptism of the Holy Spirit would do more for us than his earthly ministry did for us. In John 16, 7, but I tell you the truth, says Jesus, it is good, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I am going to send him to you. So it's good that I go away so I can send you somebody else, so I can send the comforter. He's like, it's better than me being here for me to send the Holy Spirit to you. Wow, that's a good start. It's like, I believe it's like the difference between being an, amb in a, an ambassador in a foreign country, because we are all ambassadors of Christ into this foreign country. Am I right? It's the difference between being an ambassador and being a person that builds a fortress in a foreign land, a huge mansion in a foreign land, full of all the gifts and the tools and the equipment for back, from back home. 
I believe that that's what happens when we receive the Holy Spirit because Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is something more, it's power. Okay, he makes that clear. He says, it's, this is going to be better, and it's, you're not just going to be an ambassador. You are going to be a powerhouse. It's going to be a different story. This experience of having the Holy Spirit is for Christians, not unbelievers. Okay, John 14, 17, the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, believers, for he lives with you and he will be in you. The world cannot accept the Holy Spirit. It says so right in the Bible. Okay? So this experience is for Christians, not for unbelievers. Salvation is for unbelievers. You should get saved if you're an unbeliever. You should accept Jesus. All right? John baptized those who repented. John the Baptist baptized those who repented. And then he prophesied something more would happen. Matthew 3.11, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That was a prophecy from John the Baptist. It's a, it's a separate experience from believing in Jesus. Acts 19.2, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So there you go. And here's, here's what happened. Here's what happened the first time God baptized people with the Holy Spirit. It's in Acts 2, verse 2. So the first time God baptized people with the Holy Spirit, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So speaking in tongues was a major part of this experience. Okay, please, just see the connection there. See, it disappeared. <laughs> just see, <laughs> see the connection here. They were, the Holy Spirit came, then were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues. And then the whole rest of the chapter, the whole rest of the story is all about tongues. It's like, what, what are you guys doing? Why are you talking like this? Blah, 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 blah. And on and on it goes. It's all, this experience was connected with speaking in tongues. Our mace, our, so I'm going to talk about that. When Jesus talks about you, he said, listen, when Jesus talked about you, he talked about you in the Bible, he said that you would speak in tongues. Do you know that? Yeah. Mark 16, 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Isn't that weird? He said you are going to speak in new tongues. Okay, Jesus, I suppose we're going to speak in tongues. Our most basic belief about tongues is in 1 Corinthians 4, 14, 39. And it says this, do not forbid speaking in tongues. Just plain old can't be any more simple. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. That's just right out of the Bible. Our, our most basic belief about tongues is go for it. Go for it. It's a tool, it's a weapon, it is a gift that we all need. And 1 Corinthians 14 is the chapter that explains tongues out of all the chapters. So turn to 1 Corinthians 14, get your pencil out or your pen and get ready to underline tons of verses because it's all about speaking in tongues. Paul starts by saying this in 1 Corinthians 14, 1. He says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. So he's going to talk about prophecy. He starts by comparing prophecy and tongues. That's what the whole chapter 1 Corinthians 14 is. He starts by comparing prophecy and tongues, and he says this, prophecy is better, but both are good. Okay, here, I, I want to shout this from the mountaintops. He says, he says prophecy is better, but both are good. First, and, and the reason I know he says that both are good is because in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, he says, Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Is it up there? I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. This is what Paul's saying. 
I thank God that I, it's like me saying to you, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But this is Paul the Apostle. So we are like, wow, we respect you because you're speaking as an oracle of God, saying that you are glad you speak in tongues more than all these Corinthians. All right? Now, if I were to say that prophecy is better, but both are good, it, here's an illustration. Prophecy is like gold, and tongues is like silver, okay? Gold is better than silver. Both have value, but gold more, has more value, okay? So <laughs> it's just, a gold bar is $817,000. A silver bar is $12,000, same, same size. Here's, if, if a banker came to you and said, um, you need to refuse all gifts of silver because gold is, is more valuable, you'd say, you're a foolish financial advisor, Mr. Banker. Get out of my life. Who would say, because gold is more valuable than silver, that do not accept any silver gifts? Except, so it says prophecy is better than, than tongues, but we need to accept tongues because tongues is valuable. All right? A house filled with silver bars will experience the riches that Paul lists here. A house filled with tongues, a, a, a soul that, that understands what tongues is all about, will experience the riches that Paul talks about in this chapter. So we're going to look at it. Are, are we all on the same page? Yes. Good. It is possible to desire prophecy more while actually using tongues more. Okay? How is this possible? If you, okay, so he says desire, desire prophecy. But it's possible that you could desire prophecy more and still use tongues more. How is this possible? Let's say I have a big bag, and in the bag is mixed uh, gold coins, which are worth $1,000 each, and silver coins, little silver coins, which are worth $10 each. In my day-to-day -day life, I am going to use the silver coins much more in transactions. And I'm telling you, speaking in tongues is just like that. Of course, prophecy is powerful and is speaking from heaven. And it's a gift that we all need to desire. But when you are up against multitudes of confusing situation, speaking mysteries of God, speaking in tongues is something you do, can use continually. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, prophecy is more valuable, but I use tongues more. That's why Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Cool? That's awesome. So it's more useful in everyday uh, ministry. And it's true. Very, very true. Okay, so we're going to talk about tongues. You begin, when you speak in tongues, you begin to talk to God about things that are difficult or impossible to understand or explain. And it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. When you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking out and declaring God's secret plan over your life. Because when you speak, okay, I'm going to read this again. No one understands him. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. So you're speaking out the mysteries of God when you're praying in tongues. And people, words have creative power. Words, every word has creative power that comes out of your mouth. If you, if you curse, <laughs> the Bible says, don't do this. You know, blessings come out. I bless you, my children. You know, your kids come over. I bless you guys. You're all, all blessed. And then the driver cuts you off. I wish you'd go to, whoops, same mouth. And he says, that shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be doing that because it's, 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 a, it's a power problem. Words have creative power. All the words that come out of your mouth have creative power. I have a question for you. But, but I'm not speaking in English when I'm speaking in tongues. Question, were God's words in the creation week English? Did they have the power of creation in them? Yeah, of course they did. It doesn't matter what language you're speaking. If you are uttering mysteries by your spirit, you are bringing the, the, the will of heaven into the earth by speaking in tongues out of your mouth. And you don't know what you're saying, but it is still as powerful as the word of God being spoken. Okay? Speaking in tongues builds your spiritual house. 1 Corinthians 14.4, it says this, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. The word edifies in the Greek means to be a house builder. So he who speaks in tongues is a house builder. He builds, he builds his spiritual life up. He's building himself. 
If you've ever had abundant, if you've ever had, built a house, if you have abundant building materials just sitting all over, it can be messy, disorganized, and complicated. You know, you got tools over here, you got fasteners here, you got your wood here, you got everything laying all over the place. Anybody ever walk through a construction site like that? It's a mess. It is a disaster. But when the house is built, it's simple, strong, beautiful, and functional. He's saying this, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Have you ever heard thousands of sermons and, and you've just been reading the Bible and you've read all kinds of verses and it doesn't seem to be making any sense? You've got all this building material and you're not building anything with it. He who speaks in tongue edifies himself. He builds that. There's another verse that says the same thing in Jude 1.20. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. It's saying the same thing. He says, you've got all this faith. You've got all this knowledge. You've got all this information. Now pray in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will start to build a spiritual house out of it. And you'll find out the knowledge turns into wisdom, that the knowledge turns into wisdom because the Holy Spirit starts building. That's powerful. Here's another thing. It is God's will for you to speak in tongues. You can just say that flat out. It is God's will. 1 Corinthians 14.5 says... I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. Going to repeat that first part again. I, this is in the Bible, the inspired word of God. God breathed. God breathed Bible. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. And then he says, but I'd rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongue unless he interprets so that the church would be edified. Here's what he's saying. Everyone needs tongues. Also, get the gold while you're in the vault. Because I tell you, speaking in tongues is one tiny step away from prophecy. And once you start doing that, you'll see how it, they're both pulling on God. They're both pulling on heaven. And it's just a small step to go into prof, to prophetic understanding if you've been a person that speaks in tongues. Everyone needs to speak in tongues. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. Something happens between you and Satan when you speak in tongues. This is probably one of the most exciting things. I, well, it's a, these are all amazing things. But something happens between you and Satan when you speak in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 11 says this. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker and he is a foreigner to me. As you speak in tongues and you're uttering mysteries of God, and Satan's like, what's he saying? What's he Satan? What's he saying? What's he saying? Your relationship with the enemy becomes more and more foreign. Because he speaks to you, he says this, hey, you're going to die. And you're like, what? I can't even understand your words. Because you, you become a foreigner to the enemy. <laughs> it's the truth. Yes, so that's good. I want you to consider all the mysteries that you've been speaking when you're praying in tongues. What's the result? What is the result? of? Uh, let's say you spend an hour speaking in tongues, you know, praying in the Spirit. What's the result? Here's the result. 1 Corinthians 14, 13. For this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. I want to tell you that when you pray in the Spirit, if you interpret what you say, the wisdom of God will come out from what you've already prayed in the Spirit, will come out at various times as, a, as extraordinary insight and wisdom. Could be in a counseling session, could be with your neighbor, could be something else. So all of a sudden it's like, wow, I said that. Where did that come from? I know for a fact God has said, in counseling especially, you, that came to you because you speak in tongues. And I, you just interpreted something you said a month ago or a week ago. For this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. Tongues is also called praying in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So praying in a tongue is praying in the Spirit. So if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. We are, we are told to pray both ways. You are, you are told by God to pray both ways, with the understanding and in, and in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. If you're 
If you're praying in the spirit, you're not praying with your mind. So you're praying in a language you don't understand. Isn't that amazing? Right in the Bible. We are told to pray in the spirit. We are told to pray in a language we can't understand. Sometimes praying with understanding is a lot more appropriate. Like if they invite you over for dinner and you're going to pray for the meal. You don't just say shandalai, shandalai. Amen. That's just not... That's just not that polite. You just pray normally. I want to say this. Paul prayed in tongues a lot, and he thanked God for it. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Okay? He th now, he's, how much did Paul speak in tongues? How much did he? More than the Corinthians, who he was... He was rebuking because they were praying in tongues their whole service. He was saying, don't do that. You guys are praying in tongues your whole service. You need to have some prophecy in there so people will understand what's going on. And he talks about that in the same chapter. So the Corinthians are praying in tongues their whole church service. And he says, I pray in tongues more than all of you guys. That is a lot of praying in tongues. This is Paul the Apostle. I am telling you, the guy who wrote your Bible prayed in tongues all, all the time. Continually, a lot. If, if you aren't thanking God for tongues like Paul is, then you don't yet realize the full value of what tongues is. Why would Paul be so thankful? I believe it was the source of revelation to write the New Testament because he was continually getting inspired by God. It was prophetic flow from the Holy Spirit. Tongues must be done. So says the Bible. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of these must be done. Is that in your Bible? All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. All of them must be done. Let's read that again. All of these must be done. Yep, still there. So tongues must be done. <laughs> There's two ways to use tongues. The first way is in church, and the second way is for yourself. 1 Corinthians 14, 28. If there's no interpreter, listen, if there's no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. You can pray in tongues by yourself as much as you want. If there's no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. Okay? So in other words... You don't have somebody saying, Shondalai, 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 Shondalai. And then there's nobody to come up and say, he said, you, God loves you with an undying love. <laughs> what he always says, <laughs> which is true. But, it, but, I, but if nobody's interpreting and I'm not doing it as a gift for the church, I can sit in my seat and just like, I love you, Lord. I love yeah. Shondalai, Shondalai, Shondalai all day long. I'm not asking for it to be interpreted. Now, you're, you're like, well, you're doing it audibly. If, I, if I'm sitting in my chair and I'm saying, Jesus, you are Lord of heaven and earth. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I worship you. So I, you're not going to get upset at that. Well, why can't I do the same volume speaking in tongues and we not be realizing I'm just doing it. I'm just preach, uh, praying myself to myself. Right on? All right. So Paul prayed more than them all, so he must have done it privately. And here's the conclusion. We are going to ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us. Listen, if you, if you, are, uh, if you just never heard of this before, your, your heart's probably not, unless God's really working on you, your heart's probably not hungry to, to uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. But, if, but there, people go for months and months and years. It's like, I want the Holy Spirit. I want more. I've heard about this. What, what's going on? It seems supernatural. It seems like power from on high. It seems like people are connected with God. You know, if, you're hung, if your heart's been stirred, you need a message like this because it's time tonight to let the Holy Spirit fill you and to speak in tongues. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how the experience comes to you. We're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us. When we ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us, you are going to get the Holy Spirit, no question about it. Luke eleven thirteen. 13, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He is going to, for sure, give the Holy Spirit to you. He's not going to say, no, no, I, you don't, I don't, I'm not, you're not ready for it. No, never. He'd never say that about salvation. 
Like a guy is a sinner and he's broken and he's crying and he's like, I need Jesus. God's not going to say, no, you're not ready for it. Never, never. Same with the Holy Spirit. Of course, I'm going to give you everything. Some people have asked for the Holy Spirit, but we're going to talk about speaking in tongues too and how that, that's going to happen. Here's, here's, here's something, stuff about speaking in tongues because I had a really long journey getting to the point to speak in the tongues. It was, I was... I was all by myself, and I said, God, I want to speak in tongues. Because I saw these people, they were like on fire for God, and I knew there was something to it, and my mom said it was okay, and, which is good. I'm just, I was in college, but I don't know. You have that, you have that legacy that, it, that this is a good thing, and that helps. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in tongues. And so, Shondalai, Shondalai. Really, I do say more than that, but that's my <laughs> illustration. I, I was by myself in the bedroom. I was so embarrassed I said, I'm never going to do that again. I was ashamed, all by myself. And I want to talk about that. It's the first time your mind has ever not been in control of your mouth. First time in history that your mind has not been in control of your mouth, and your mind is going to say, stop that. No. No. Very strongly, your mind is going to say, do not do that. That is out of order. I am in charge. And you're going to have to decide, is the Spirit of God in charge of your soul or is your brain going to be the highest authority? Oh, boy, is that a job. Oh, boy, is that a surrender. That's something that you just say, God, if I'm a fool, I'm going to do this because I believe I'm in obedience right now. And so you just do it. And then God meets you. Whoa. You've got to experience it to understand what I'm talking about. But it's his power. It's one of the five powerful things that you'll ever experience in your life. Salvation, baptisms, Jesus coming back, and whatever else. Oh, sharing your faith. Okay. You are in control of the speaking. You can start and stop speaking in tongues whenever you want to. 1 Corinthians 14, 32, the spirit of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. When somebody's speaking in tongues, like Carly, Wednesday night, who I prayed for her, and she just started speaking in tongues, I said, I want you to stop. She's like, okay. I want you to go. And I was praying with her. She just started up. I say, see, you can start and stop whenever you want to, because the spirit of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. That means you can pray in the spirit anytime you want to. It's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. You know, you hear testimonies of people, yeah, I was standing there, and then God took me, and I couldn't stop speaking in tongues. It's like, that is totally not my experience. I, I, you meet very few people that that happens. And if you're waiting for that to happen, it's never going to, maybe it'll happen, but it's probably not going to happen. It's as likely of you speaking in tongues out of control as of dying of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not even going to go there anymore. Okay, you have, here's another thing that I need to say. You must open your own mouth, and you must make the sounds come out that are not English. I want to read this, Acts 2.4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They spoke in tongues, and the Spirit enabled them. So they're speaking, they're offering sounds to God, and the Spirit is coming and enabling that, those sounds to be mysteries. Yeah. Let's read that again. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. It takes faith that God is making your sounds His language. Why is it so hard? Because your mind objects. Your brain has never before not been in control. So every language, now, and here's the next thing. Every language starts with one syllable. When you have a baby, your language starts with one syllable. All, all the baby says is da, 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 two, two, two. He's got to say da, da. <laughs> and he always says da, da. Who, is he going to say da, da or mama first? <laughs> okay. When that, when that baby says da, da, you're... It is, it is the, you don't, you don't despise small beginnings because what, what you know is happening is you're starting to communicate with me in a way you've never communicated before and everything's different from that moment on. So when we speak in tongues and it's like, all I said was Shondalai because that's what Pastor Bob told me to say. 
It's like, that can't mean anything. It means everything if you did it. Okay, don't say Shondalai. So you're not allowed to say Shondalai. But whatever you do say, it is the beginning of speak, uttering every mystery of your life in the heavenlies to God. It's the beginning of it. And God is so psyched about you uh, humbling yourself and surrendering yourself to the point of, of embarrassing your own soul to give to him and pray in the Holy Spirit, believing that it's what the Bible's talking about. And he is psyched out of his mind that you are starting a, language, a communication with him that Satan can't understand. It's a d direct line. It brings the power of God. It does everything that talked about in Acts 2. It was the beginning of the whole church waking up. Yeah. And man, this Jesus people movement is going to happen. And being baptized in the Holy Spirit, just like it was back in the 70s, is a big part of it. And God wants you in. Yeah. He wants you in on it. And so it's so exciting. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Everyone, we're going to stand up. And if this is something you've been hungering for, we are going to, uh, we're going to pray to receive the Holy Spirit. So let's everyone close our eyes. Lord God, and if this is your prayer, just say to the Lord, and lift your hands and just say to the Lord, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. This is something I've wanted for a long time. It's something I've desired, just to have more of that fire, to have more of your presence, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, I trust that, it, it, that, is, uh, that as I enter into this, that you are going to inspire the words of my, the sound of my mouth to be uh, uttered uh, language that, you, that we are communicating with. Even though my mind is unfruitful, it'll be praying in the Spirit. In Jesus' name, if you want to be a part of that, or I, I think we'll have the leaders come up. So everyone stay standing. Daniel, and you want to play some music? That'll be awesome. And uh, Roxanne. Because a, a lot of times the connection with uh, somebody's prayer is good. And, and so if you want, it, if you want this, and, and you don't have to come this instant. Well, if you don't respond right now, you can always come later. But come forward if any of you want to be uh, prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.